Greetings, everybody. I'm coming back here to address, sorry, address the video that my sister sent me this morning. Once again, Aishana finds herself in hot water. This time, uh, she made reference of Louis Bennett, one of our great cultural icons, clothing or headdress as tablecloth. And the people are very offended by this. Now, those of you who don't know Louise Bennett, she is, as I said, a cultural icon. When I was growing up, she had a program on TV, Ring Ding. She's a poet, and she wrote her poems in Patwa. She showed national and African pride in her work. Um, a great, a beautiful woman. When I think of Louise Bennett, a smile comes to my face, as does most people who are Jamaican. When we hear of her, she is the mother you know, that mother of national pride. Now, the debate has begun because this young lady, this um, artist, says that she doesn't want to wear clothing that looks like Louise Bennett's clothes because it looks like a tablecloth. And while it, on the surface, it does appear to be offensive, but I always like to take the middle ground, especially when I see people ganging up on other people. I don't like to be a part of that ganging up. And I am saying that Aishana made that statement. And if it sounds ignorant, perhaps people need to stop and look at themselves. Look at the time, uh, a period that she grew up, examine her household. How many persons in her household celebrated um, Louise Bennett? Now, everybody might know of her and probably like the work that she did. But how many of them lived their life the way she did? Now, in terms of the clothing that she's referring to tablecloth, can I ask a question? How many of you women in Jamaica would be caught dead wearing a piece of that uh, 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 material, whether headdress or in your clothing? Even those people who are jumping at her, they're being hypocrites because they have no links to Africa. They have no national pride in terms of their African heritage. So, Perhaps what we can do is educate Aishana about the woman, the iconic woman that she was and what she represented. I also want to say is Louise Bennett wrote her poems in Patwa and Jamaica is a place that taught us how to be ashamed of her Patwa. So many people in the household and in the community say, you chat too bad when you're speaking Patwa. You chat too bad. In fact, I don't know if they do that in other Caribbean areas, but I know in Jamaica, it is something that kids get beaten at top of their head to say, speak better. Speak better means speak more fluent English language. Those who have a better command of the English language are shown, are treated with more respect. And especially when you travel and you return and you're not speaking Patwa, people respect you more because you sound like a foreigner. They start referring to you as a foreigner. They grew up with you. You lived in Jamaica till you were like 30 years old. And when you leave and you come back, they call you a foreigner and they show you more respect than they would show you when you were there because now you're associated to another culture and other people. So you automatically get respect. So when she says this woman's clothes looks like tablecloth, perhaps she's seeing the same material being used as such. It is indeed a cultural, you know, part, uh, part of her heritage. But how many persons value that? And is Jamaica that same place? People who are Louise Bennett's age and maybe a little younger, remember that period of time. That was a different time for those folks. Now our children are taught that everywhere else is better. When they have dreams, no matter what's happening for them, even if you are a, a, a budding artist, even if you're a successful person in Jamaica, the one thing that a lot of people feel that will make them better and make them more successful is to leave the island. What cultural pride are you talking about? I'm not saying what she said is right, but maybe instead of attacking her, you might use what she says to now educate the younger people, to teach them about value for self and culture and value for their heritage. We don't want our people to speak the same language that she was writing in her in her poems we still hear people talking uh bragging that nobody can speak patwa in their classroom what kind of national pride and heritage is that that philosophy that comes that says don't speak 
patwa in a Jamaican class. Get out of here, people, with your nonsense. What national pride do we have when we see people violating each other daily? This kind of, you know, cultural... I don't know what to, I don't want to give it labels. I don't want to say negative things about Jamaica that more than it's necessary. But I'm just saying the hypocrisy is ripe in Jamaica and we conveniently celebrate our heritage when it makes us look good. But if you examine how we are behaving, how many of you are going to the side of the road and buying corn and soup from the local? How many of you are going on the farm or going next door to the farmer's place to buy his, his crop his, when he produces his harvest, his harvest is ready? How many of you go to support it? You go into the supermarket to buy some big, ugly carrot, poisonous things. You go in the supermarket with packaged goods and you leave your neighbor who plants the same thing, the one that is organic. You leave that to go support that Chinese garbage food or whosoever is in the country bringing poison to you. What heritage, what cultural heritage, people spend millions of dollars doing garbage, entertaining foreigners, you know, bringing socialites. How much, much of that money is spent building the community? How many uh, uh, of our government body people are going in the school and setting up, you know, cultural heritage how many places are built in jamaica with museum that reminds us of who we are and our african heritage how many of us are proud to be associated to our blood our brothers and sisters or africans get out of here with this fake outrage she knows nothing about national pride she just knows that she wants to look like Americans or be sexy like the Kardashians. That's your heritage now. This is why we're dying out from all kinds of disease, from the kind of food we're eating. How many parents are coming together and sitting down with their children, having a meal like we used to do on Sundays and every day of the week. As a matter of fact, we all used to eat together as a child. How many parents are still doing that? Some of your feeding your children cup soup garbage when you pour water on that thing you're not even boiling it you're pouring water on it and taking that poison thing that comes from china that china that has no value for anybody else but themselves that put that poison thing in that package you don't know what chemicals that's not food that's not salt it's not something you recognize you see the ingredients in that toxic chemicals and you open that stuff and pour it in there and mix it and give it to your kid for lunch you disgusting what culture we've become culture vultures because we're eating up the vault the culture of other persons and we abandon our own again what she said is not right but i'm not joining you and ganging up on her because many of you if you were told to take off your weaves to 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 Take off the clothing that you're wearing and start dressing in African clothes and start going with your hair natural. You would hear that, you know, this one have bumble brush on their head or this is nigger nuts or this is frizzy hair or you hear you're too black and ugly. You know, you're bleaching your skins, many of you. And why are they doing that? Because somehow someone in the culture or someone's, many people in the culture taught these younger ones that value doesn't lie in who they are and where they come from. They must look to other persons for that. And that's what she, why she's made that comment because she doesn't, she's never seen people celebrating that. She doesn't see that national pride. She see how government from the top to the bottom embrace all things outside of their own culture and their own heritage. Bless up to the few persons who are in government bodies who celebrate our heritage every day and teach their own children. For us, many of us see success um, or building ourselves through the eyes of people who are outside of our culture. And we are proud of the ones who are in our culture who go away and become something else, speak differently 
walk differently, talk differently, disassociate themselves from their heritage. We need to teach younger ones, but we have to teach them through experience. We have to let them see how we value these forebears. And I'm not seeing nothing like that. I'm not seeing no national pride. I'm not seeing it anywhere. I'm not seeing represented in anything. Bless up to the few Rasta men who stick close to their culture and the older people who are too old to move away from it. But other than that, what we need is not to gang up on her, but to examine ourselves and say, what is it about our culture? Why have we changed? And what is influencing that change or what has already influenced that change? And if it isn't too late, and I don't think it's too late, start teaching our kids, start rolling that back, start taking back, you know, the negativity in behavior and thoughts and deeds and going back and linking up with our past, accepting it, embracing it and living it. Be blessed.